Welcome to NIB's Worldwide Business Cave Competition of 2014. The consultancy team presenting is from Lati University. The presentation will last 20 minutes and I'm your timekeeper. I will show you a piece of paper which means you have 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes and 1 minute. When you notice me, if you can nod so I know. And judges, you also have 10 minutes for your Q&A. I will show you a piece of paper for 5, 3 and 1 if you can nod. Just to let you know, as soon as I show one minute and your one minute is up, I will stop you whether you have finished or not. Um, judges, if you now would like to introduce yourself and then after your presentation can start. I'm Peter Blows. <coughs> I'm B. Rose, I'm chairing this session. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen from Tennessee Valley Authority. My name is Isa and this is my team. We're from Lamp Consultant Group. And today we are here to help you face the new challenges as well as present our vision for your future. So let's have a look at today's agenda. So first, I will briefly introduce the key issue and after that, several analysis. And then my friend Elisa here will continue with the alternative as well as our recommendation. Um, Sebastian will carry on with our detailed implementation plan. And finally, how we will be in charge of financial analysis. So now we shall begin with the key issue. So the TVA has been operating for many years, and now, like I have mentioned before, many challenges have been coming one after another. So here we are today to help you strengthen your sustainability. And in order to do that, we'll help you determine your capital investment plan as well as keep your price competitiveness. And now we look into the analysis. First one in the industrial analysis. So here I have the Porter Five Forces with the Five Forces on the screen, but I want to address the most is the power of buyer over there. It's medium. Uh, we have to, in one sense, the buyer here they are somewhat price taker, but here in the United States they have some power for themselves. Uh, they have customer rights and they have customer benefits. So if they feel unsatisfied or unfair, they might raise their voice. And another one I want to address is the rivalry. The competition between competitors is high because there are many big players out there. They are committed. They know what they're doing. They, are, they, they also want to keep their price as low as possible. And the electricity industry itself is kind of complicated. So here I want to address a bit more about the key success factor. Electricity can be stored, that's one big problem. And the demand, it changes a lot. If arrived by season, if arrived by the time of the day. And one more thing is the income gap. It affects a lot about our pricing strategy. We have to address that very sensitively. And another thing is this industry comes with high environmental and social responsibility. We, need, we want to remind you about that. And moving on, we'll talk about the internal analysis. So here I have is the summary and also the combination between the power generation alternative you already have. And after like assessment of the key issue and key success factor, we acquire that natural gas as well as the soil energy at the power at the source of power that has the more potential for growth. And last but not least is the SWOT analysis. First is your strength. So your strength is your experience, your know-how, as well as your position as one of the market leader. And what needs to improve is your capacity. It has been quite inadequate. And the fact that you have to outsource 11% of the power needed has somewhat indicates that improvement needs to improve, that's it. So what the external environment gives you? First is the opportunity. Increase in disposable income, meaning like the customer themselves might want to pay a bit more for the price. And technological advancement might help with the um, productivity and efficiency of the power generation process. And climate change is some sense, it can be opportunities, and, but on the other hand, it will be a huge threat for our companies. And decrease in disposable income, natural disaster, is also a um, considerable threat as well. So that concludes my part. Now, Elisa, my friend, will continue with alternative and recommendation. Thank you, sir. So in order to answer the key issue, we provide you with three possible solutions. Let's see the first one. So the first alternative that we present to you is that you differentiate your pricing system so that the people with high-end income and the low-end income pay the different price 
for the power that they get. This will give you the profit and also there are no additional costs because you don't need to invest in anything new. However, for the sustainability which is important to your company, this isn't the best solution. And also this only offers you the short-term solution which you are not looking for. The second alternative is to that you stick with your current production, but you educate your customers so that the demand doesn't uh, it isn't based on the peak hours of the day and it's more equally divided during the day. This is positive for the cost because there is no additional investment and also the relying on others. Risks are limited because of your know-how. Profit, however, will stay as it is. It won't grow with the same production that you have now, it's likely that it will stay just the same. Also for sustainability, as you are now not using the maximum potential of renewable <coughs> energy sources, it's not the best solution for sustainability. As for the last alternative, we have that you increase your own production and thus increasing the sustainability. This means that you don't need to rely on other power producers anymore. Also, this will give you the profit. Sustainability, this is a long-term solution for you. However, it requires investments, especially to the renewables. And the costs, they will rise because of the investments that you need to make to the new production plans. Also, reliability on renewables is still a bit of a question, but we'll so, we shall see how the future turns out. So our recommendation is based on the decision-making matrix. On the horizontal axis, on the very top of the table, you can see the objective, weight, and alternatives. The objectives are profit, cost, sustainability, and risks. Each objective is weighted based on the importance of the objective. Each alternative is given a scale between 1 and 5, 1 being the lowest and 5 being the highest. As you are a company and you want to make profit, we scaled or weighted the profit to be the highest. But since you are looking for long-term solutions and sustainability is really important to your company, we weighted the sustainability to be the same with the costs. And the Finally, you can see that the alternative three scores the best points, and that is our recommendation. So, you, our, we recommend that you increase your own production and thus increase your sustainability. My friend Sebastian will continue what it means in practice. Thank you, Elisa. So, we have formalized an implementation plan for your company, and it, it is divided to uh, three different parts. First, the, the short term implementation. Just if we can change the slide. Just one moment. Um, first, in the short term implementation, after that comes the mid term implementation part, and finally, the long term implementation. And uh, let's start with the short term implementation. Uh, some objectives to be achieved in the short term part is uh, clarifying the vision of your company. Um, preparation of production plans and uh, designs, and also conducting market research and uh, research and development. In the midterm part, it's also uh, it's important to start part of your production plans and carry out marketing as well as train your uh, employees as well as uh, offer um, training for your uh, customers. In the long term part, it's uh, important that you evaluate your um, strategy and make changes if needed. It's also important to continue the market research and research and de development and uh, develop uh, continuously your operations. So let's go to the more detailed short-term implementation part. So firstly, as mentioned, you should clarify the vision of Tennessee Valley uh, Authority. The aim, what we recommend for your company is that you increase, uh, increase your own production and maintain the low prices for your customers. Uh, the de dependence on fossil fuels should be reduced and uh, the sustainability should be also improved in your company. 
Uh, it's also important that you lose the uh, dependence on other energy product producers and you use only the other producers when there is an urgent need for uh, energy. So the current en energy capacity of your company is approximately 37,188 MW. The uh, estimated capacity need in 2018, which is the end of our implementation plan, is 39,084 MW. Uh, you have to also take into account the demand growth, which is uh, estimated to be 1%, that also uh, part of your coal plants will be retired, uh, replaced and retiring uh, during that uh, implementation period. So you have to be also prepared to build at least 2,835 megawatts uh, extra capacity. We recommend that your company should build five natural gas plants, five solar installations and two wind farms. The estimated costs for this uh, in, uh, investment is approximately 4.78 billion US dollars, and uh, you should uh, in, uh, you should get the funding through 30-year uh, bonds. Uh, it's also uh, very important that you start preparing for the new production sites and you start designing the plants. Uh, it's also very important that you research you make research for the best local location for the. Uh, wind farm and solar installations. <coughs> you, you can also, you should also start training your staff and uh, to ensure the sustainable uh, future of your company, as well as uh, improve the employee loyalty. Let's continue with the action plan. So, in short term, uh, it's divided to short term, mid term, and long term, and it's uh, illustrating which actions are taking place in which part of the implementation plan. So, in the short term, it's important to do the market research, and based on the market research, you should act in the midterm. So, of course, uh, important that you do it continuously, and you continue the uh, research on the long term. Uh, the research and devel development on production and technology and education has to be also conducted in the so uh, short term. Uh, it's very important that you, um, you are aware of uh, all the newest technology available for your company. And it's also important that you educate your staff that they can answer to your customer needs in the best possible way. It's also important that you let your consumers know how they can save energy and how, can, how they can also improve their sustainability. It's also important that you market your products in a traditional way for your customers, so sending leaflets and brochures for your customers as well as uh, email uh, messages and positive phone calls and tell about your product offerings. Let's continue further to the midterm. In the midterm, you should start building the designed production units. So, um, for the wind farms and solar power plants, uh, the estimate is the production or the um, building takes <coughs> this uh, one year. And for the natural gas plants, it, it, it is taking approximately two and a half years. Uh, the aim uh, of our implementation is that the natural gas plants will cover the base load and peak electricity and uh, they also provide a lower environmental uh, impacts as well as, well as efficiency compared to the coal uh, pro uh, plants. Uh, it's also uh, the benefit of the natural gas, uh, gas plants is that they are also agile. You can uh, start and stop the uh, uh, production if, uh, and you can base the, um, uh, yeah, it's agile, so you can uh, make, um, react to demand changes very quickly. Uh, you can also avoid trials and er er environmental disasters with the natural gas plants because they don't, uh, they are not such a threat for the uh, for the environment. The downside of the coal plants is, of course, the price volatility, and uh, we recommend that you try to lock the prices with the suppliers. And for the um, wind farms and solar stations, the aim is that you decrease the dependency on fossil fuels and uh, they should have a more important part of your uh, company um, energy production. It's also uh, important that you develop a demand-based pricing system that uh, it gives an incentive for your customers to uh, reduce consumption in peak times. It's also important that you carry out the prepared marketing and the training of your consumers. And uh, uh, we estimate that with this training, uh, the, the um, peak time consumption will decrease by approximately 
Let's continue with the long-term implementation still. And uh, it's the time to start the reproduction plants. And uh, um, it is uh, very important that you cover your base load with gas and not nuclear stations. It's also important that you evaluate the actions and stay agile to industrial changes. And uh, you have to be ahead of competition uh, by technical development and uh, market research. You have to know also what your customers need and want and what, how the industry is changing. Is, uh, is it also so that in the future the re renewables uh, will be so important? And you have to be aware of uh, all sorts of uh, changes in demand. It's also uh, important that you uh, maintain the reliable supply of electricity and uh, decrease the peak time demand uh, through uh, pricing solutions. And it's also important that you manage the uh, land and in enhance the relationship with the state governments and continue the cooperation in financial development. So after this five years implementation plan, your company will have an improved capacity uh, and you will have also a lower dependency on fossil fuels. So thank you, and this was all about, all about my part and how we'll be uh, telling more about the detailed financial analysis. Thank you, Sebastian. Based on the initial objectives of our key issue of uh, defining well, how much of the capital investment that we need, and also uh, based on the objective of the implementation plan of improving our capacity of producing energy. Uh, this financial analysis part will try to answer those two questions. Uh, this first slide is gives you a reminder of how much the plant which that comes with different type of energy generation. We can see that the nuclear plant costs the most, but it actually comes with the risk of a certificate uh, because of the nuclear issue and also the coal, it, it can come with the issue of pollution. So based on the implementation plan, we will go with the natural gas, solar and wind energy plants. And then next slide, we have some kind of estimation for your company of energy generation capacity with the current capacity of 37,188 megawatts and also together with an annual growth of 1% every year. We calculate the total demand in the next five years until 2018 that would be roughly 40,000 megawatts that needed with the market in the next uh, five years. Uh, so we have some calculation and also together with uh, the closing down of the current two coal plants, we have an estimation of capacity that needs to cover that is uh, 2,835 megawatts. And that together with the excessive capacity, 1,896 megawatts. And in the next slide, we will provide you with the number of the suggested uh, new plans that we suggest for your company to be awarded. We suggest the natural gas plants of five size, solar energy five size, and also the wind energy two size. And the total energy can, can, could be generated from those new size is 4,550 megawatts per year. So it's able, they are able to cover uh, also uh, the, um, the capacity of the current but soon to be replaced coal plants and also the excess capacity that meets the demand of the market. So finally, the natural gas and nuclear accounts for 80% of the total energy Generation and the wind only accounts for wind and solar accounts for twenty percent. So, how much do we need for that five plants of uh, uh, natural gas and wind and solar energy? That's it. the total loan that we need to acquire is four point seven eight billion dollars, and we recommend your company to acquire the thirty year government bonds because that's the most efficient and also the most favorable bond that we can ever have. And now comes to the conclusion. We try to address you about our key issue that we want to address you about your sustainability in business. And we also provide you with a recommendation to increase your capacity in production. And the implementation plan should be conducted in five years in order to achieve the suggested capacity that needed. 
and the finally required capital investment is 4.78 billion USA US dollar with the 30 year governmental bonds. And now that comes to the end of our presentation and it would be more pleasure to have your questions. Thank you. Peter, would you like to? Uh, yeah, one or two things. You went for opportunity number three, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, you didn't seem to mention prices. Um, may I repeat your question? That you want to know the price of. Well, the price to the consumer, you didn't seem to say much about that. That was one thing. Question, yeah, yeah. The question is, can you elaborate on the pricing strategy for alternative three? The pricing strategy is that we aim or we recommend that your company is keeping the prices stable and they should be affordable for your customers because uh, in the Tennessee Valley and the area you're operating, it's also very important that for the economical development of that area, that the prices should be also uh, lower. So that's why we mentioned that we recommend that you take a 30-year loan bond and you don't increase the prices and fund the investment in such way. Did that answer the question? So you So basically, you're not thinking of smart meters, obviously, um, or differential pricing for peak loans. Um, yeah. Actually, the price would be higher for peak than the base. Actually, we, we, I mentioned it briefly in the implementation plan. I may have not been clear enough. Uh, I would, we recommend that your company has two pricing systems. Uh, the off-peak or the peak uh, times would be more, more costly. And uh, then you could also have the uh, full-time uh, pricing strategy that you have the same price for all the hours. And then you have uh, more pricey um, um, hours in the peak times. So this means that the customers could choose what sort of contract they do with your company. So if they, for example, wash their laundry during the night, always they can choose uh, the um, off peak strategy. Um, um, you. Um, you talked briefly about um, the locations for um, the proposed sites, and I was wondering what kind of um, factors you think we should take into consideration when we're selecting those, site, uh, you know, those sites, um, particularly in relation to the community and businesses. Of, of course, the location is the key factor. So it's, it is very important that you and we conduct uh, together market research and we choose what is the windiest location and what is the sunniest location. So it has to be based on uh, uh, solid factors. And do you think that that's the prime, that's a primary consideration of the, the um, I suppose you know, it's where, the, where the sun is, where the wind is? Do you think there are any other factors? Of course, there are very many other factors, for example. What do you think maybe the other two, like, if that's the primary one, what are the other two? Of course, uh, the noise and how it affects, for example, the landscape. People don't want the huge uh, solar uh, uh, factories or plants next to their garden. And of course, the noise is very important to take into consideration. So the, how it looks, where it's located, does it uh, bother the local community? Have you considered this group how Oh, uh, thank you for the question. We plan to apply, we are suggesting to apply the 30 year on government bond. So that also suggests the timeline for returning the buyback right the loan. Yeah, we, we, we choose that longest uh, period of loan just to make sure that you have enough time to gain your profit and also the time to buy back the loan. So 30 years period is our suggestion. Thank you. Um, could you uh, tell me a little bit? I am concerned about the risks of the risks associated with yes, a thirty-year bond. But um, and um, what would be the cost of that? Give me some idea of the uh, uh, rates of interest that we're talking about. I don't think that your presentation covered that. Give us some idea. I. 
my, my other major question is that you want to know the risk come with yeah. the bond. At what costs would that be to my company in terms of taking out a 30 year bond? And what would be the alternatives? If I may answer this question, uh, your company is, we know that your company is available uh, in acquiring cheap funding. So the interest rate is uh, relatively affordable for your company. And the alternative would be, of course, to raise the prices, but that would come with a cost. And uh, that would be not uh, very beneficial for your company. And since you're able to get uh, uh, low interest funding, we recommend that you should take advantage of that. And what would that rate be, what would your estimation of that rate be? And what, is, uh, and what impacts do you think would a change in that rate have on the implementation plan. You mean the uh, interest rate, what, what sort of extra cost it would bring for paying back the loan? Should in case interest rates generally went up, yes. what impact would that have on, 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 on our cash flow? Of on course, on the project and on the time scale. Of course, uh, in the current time, the interest rates are very low, but we recommend that you are. Uh, taking into consideration that uh, when the economy is speeding up, the interest rates will also be uh, increasing. So um, uh, we will provide you later with the exact figures, but it's impossible to uh, make estimations of the future uh, interest rates, but you have to be prepared for uh, several percent uh, increase in the interest rates in the future. Can, can I come in with another question? Um, your, 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 your solution suggests that there's an 80 20 split uh, between um, natural, natural gas and uh, renewables. Can you give me some risk issues associated with, with that 80 20? Because that's the ultimate solution, is it? Can you give me some risk issues associated with that split? For example, you didn't mention anything about fracking. Yes we, yes, we did have the next one is our risk management here. And here we have assessed some several risk issues. And I think there might be like the risk is the, like the reliability of renewable sources. Because it depends a lot on the na nature itself and the climate is changing a lot. So here we have the impact is high. So how we can mitigate that is we can extensive research and evaluation. like for, like. My friend has mentioned before, like find the location that has, you know, the most potential and the least risk. Yes, that's why we have like extensive research. And another risk can be like natural disaster again, or with the nature. So forecast and then improve your self safety solution and such. Did you want to carry on the question? Oh, um, it doesn't, of course, not the question, but it's not. Like, you want to have yeah, yeah I, I'm just concerned a, a little bit about um, the, the natural gas resource and the idea of the fact that it's, it's, it's a depleting resource, but it's a concern to, 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 to us at TVA. Um, and therefore, with, uh, with a mix that just includes natural gas and nuclear power or more coal, I, I, I just want you to allay some of my concerns about the risks that, that I would be that would be involved in taking that relationship 8020 natural gas. I'm sorry, but can you please like repeat that question? Well, I'm, what I'm saying is that you've got you know, in in advising us to actually um, consider an option for natural gas, right, 80 percent, a long term. Yeah, and twenty percent renewables. Um, are you ex what, what are the risks are you exposing us to? I am concerned. So, if I may answer these questions, the eighty twenty percent is uh, meaning the base electricity, yeah. and it is covered by your current nuclear stations mm -hmm. and the new and the current gas yeah. stations, and the renewables are the, uh, that's an estimate of the future. So. Of course, it's a risk uh, for your company to be dependent on the natural resources, but then again, uh, we advise that your company is not only dependent on uh, nuclear stations, because it's very unsure if you will uh, get the permit, and the building costs uh, are massive, as well as uh, the uncertainty will it be uh, finished on time. Okay. 
So uh, you have to um, maximize the uh, or take the best uh, su supplier uh, relationship as you have and try to have fixed uh, cost for your natural gas. Of course, you have to be also prepared for the changes in prices because uh, uh, based on our figures which we have uh, provided, uh, we could see that always when the um, uh, economy was picking up, the uh, price of gas was also picking up. But so you have to be um, able to estimate the, um, also the increase of the gas and you have to be prepared. So monthly uh, um, assessment of the future is very important for your company. Thank you. Let me put time another question. Um, no, it's finished now. <laughs> <laughs> your time is up. Yeah, just hold the one minute. Yeah, your time is up. Uh, thank you.